Elite Expert Insider, the podcast that educates, inspires, and motivates you to take your business and life to the next level. We would like to thank Audible for supporting Elite Expert Insider. Please go to the link bit.ly forward slash Elite Audible. That's bit.ly forward slash Elite Audible. And get a free 30-day trial to show your support. Thank you, Audible. Now to Elite Expert Insider for conversations with industry leaders. Hi, I'm Melanie Johnson. We're here with uh, Jen Foster today, my co-host, and we have our guest, Lindsay Flanagan. And if you have been wondering about the insides of editing a book, if you're a writer, if you're a blog writer, you're a book writer, if you're a news writer, um, she is really going to give us some inside tips and looking at how to edit your material and what publishers are looking for as well. We're going to talk about that since we have a publishing company. So we want to remind you to subscribe to our podcast, leave us a review, and please share us with your friends. We'd really appreciate it. So we're going to get started with Lindsay. She's from uh, Eschler uh, editing, and uh, she is the head publisher there, or head editor there. So, Lindsay, welcome. We're so glad to have you. Tell us a little bit about um, your background and how you got started in editing. Okay. Hi. Thank you for having me. Uh, so, I'm Lindsay Flanagan. I'm one of the senior editors and part of the admin team for Eschler Editing. Uh, the owner is Angela Eschler. And what we do at Eschler Editing is we help authors revise or complete books to help them stand out and make an impact so they can get published either traditionally or through professional self-publishing, get agents and expand their fiction or business platforms. So um, one thing that we like to let people know is there's a big difference between our type of editors and editors of publishers. So we at Eschler, we, um, we're freelance editors and we help you get your work ready to self-publish professionally or get it good enough to actually snag an agent to get it to one of those traditional publishers. So um, I personally edit uh, fiction manuscripts. I help clients with their query letters for agents, write blog articles for clients and for Eschler. I teach, I coach writing at conferences, and I also manage the social media efforts for our company. Awesome. That's great. So tell us, what are some of the differences or things um, that you look for when someone hands you that manuscript. Uh, we work with authors all the time and they hand us, it's kind of like a, a blank canvas and you organize it. So what's the difference between good editing and bad editing? Give us um, like the five things that you can think of that uh, a writer should look for when they're hiring an editor. Well, I think for, for one, it, it kind of depends on the type of editor that they want and what kind of service that they want. Uh, do they want content editing, which is more um, helping refine your plot and your character development and your story structure, or are they looking for more line editing, which is you know making your prose perfect, or you know copy editing, which is more of the mechanics and the, the grammar and things like that. So I'm a content editor. So if someone was going to ask me you know what I'm, I'm looking for a content editor what should I look for um, I would say well you definitely want someone who's read a lot <laughs> and read a lot in your genre as well because they'll know what to look for um, you know what readers look for in that genre there's kind of an expectation I, I do a lot of YA fantasy so there's an expectation that those readers have of that genre so there, you want to be familiar with that I don't know if that was five. That was a lot of information. <laughs> that was helpful. I think that was helpful. So it's good to know someone who does the genre that you're in, who has read a lot and familiar with formatting. Um, what about for nonfiction books? How do you just take a lump of information and make it seem really interesting to a nonfiction reader? Well, I think that nonfiction and fiction, um, although very different, you can actually approach it the same way because you're looking for, in both, you're looking for a hook. You're looking for what is going to snag a reader. So that's that's one of the first things I help writers with. They hand me, you know, their first chapter, and I say, okay, what's going to get me to read this more? You know, turning. <clears throat> excuse me, sorry. <laughs> what's going to get me to turn the pages? Um, so with nonfiction, 
it depends on I think um, what you're you know what you're writing about. Are you writing a memoir? Those can be treated more like I mean those are stories mm -hmm. and what's going to hook a reader. Um, if you're going for business, you're going to be you know marketing your book to the people in that business. So are you writing self help? Are you writing weight loss? Something and something that's different. So a hook is something that's very different. How are you approaching weight loss that's different than all the books on the shelf? Well, what do you think are the reasons that somebody may fail um, with their book? What are some of the roadblocks? This is a big one because it kind of depends on again on which genre you're you're looking at. Um, if if you're going for um, an agent or an edit, um, you know, at, at a publishing house. That's one of your biggest roadblocks is you have to make sure that you're writing obviously a quality book um, and you have to write, then you have to write a query letter that's going to catch the editor or the agent's eye. That's a huge roadblock and I think another roadblock um, for writers is that they might not think that their story should be heard or that they're good enough. Um, I know writers and I am, we're kind of introverts. We don't like to get out and you know be on camera <laughs> and uh, put our work out there, but that's, I mean, you have to do that. You have to go out, you have to network, go to writing conferences and get to know people. And I think that writers, when you get out there, when I finally got out there and networked and got to know people, they're actually pretty nice and you have a lot to, to talk about with them because you love writing and they love writing. You know? That's great. What would you say then, number one reason people fail in your business? Oh, she was just going over that. <laughs> um, yeah, I think, I mean, to go for from different sides. So if someone were to come to me and say, hey, I want to be an editor, you know, what, what can you tell me about becoming an editor? Um, I mean, I'll, of course you want to you go... So, well, let me tell you my story of how I got into editing. That might help, but... I'm a better, you know, storyteller. <laughs> um, so I was actually in a different career. I was in higher education for about 10 years, but my passion was writing. And I did a lot of technical writing in my job, but um, I wanted to, you know, I wanted to write stories. And um, I went to a writer's conference. I put myself out there and I actually met Angela. And I was immediately impressed by her and her knowledge. And... Um, she gave me her card and was like, hey, if you ever need, you know, anything, let me know. And, you know, so a few years after I got my, um, a few years later, I started pursuing my master's degree in English and writing. And my advisor said, you need to go get an internship if you want to get into editing. And I'm thinking, how do I do that? Well, I pulled out the card from Angela Eschler and I, gave, I shot her an email, just took a big chance. And I emailed a couple other, you know, local companies and said, hey, I'm, I'm a graduate student and I'm also a professional and I'm a mom and I need an internship and Angela took me on. Um, so getting out there, you know, finding people that can help you um, and that who know the business. Um, Angela has been, she's kind of taken me under her wing, so to speak, and taught me a lot. So that's how you get into editing, I guess. You get out there, you find people in the business already, you learn from them. My graduate degree was awesome. I learned a lot, but I can honestly say I think I've learned more being in the business. Yeah. Great. So what are some of the myths in your business? That we're snobby. <laughs> <laughs> um. That's true. I've met a lot of editors and it's not true. <laughs> it's not. It is. And that's the other thing too is getting out there and, and meeting people you find you have a lot in common with them. Um, but yeah, it, it is close-knit and difficult to get into, at least for traditional publishing. Um, but again, once you get in there, you're going to find people who are so similar to you and they're pretty nice. <laughs> um, I think a myth in self-publishing is that you can just throw your book together and throw it up online and you'll have success as an author and be able to avoid all those evil gatekeepers like agents and editors um, who just want your money. But um, if you aren't taking the process seriously and shooting for a professional result, you'll basically sell no books and kind of embarrass yourself in the process if you put an unprofessional book out there. So, mm -hmm. um, I think there are is there any difference between fiction and nonfiction? 
um, when you're publishing? And what uh, nonfiction business owners can really be served by self-publishing um, because they can do it quickly and control the process. But they'll still want to hire editing and publishing professionals to help so their product makes an impact. Because a lot of business owners, while really savvy about what they do, they might not be writers. They might not know the way to package a book, a great cover and great jacket copy to get it out there and catch people who, you know, want to read a book, whether it's fiction or non. Um, so yeah, I, I think that nonfiction writers really can benefit from hiring professional editors to help them and self-publishing for them is it might be a little bit more lucrative than just throwing out a, a fantasy book. And then what about for uh, fiction writers? Is it the same for fiction writers? Well I think that serious fiction authors who love the craft and don't have a lot of books out first should probably go for traditional publishing. Um, but if they self-publish first, they'll need to learn the craft at the same level required to break into traditional publishing. Um, assuming that their goal is to be a professional writer, making it what they want to do for their career, very few people have succeeded by just writing and putting their first story out there. Mm -hmm. so would you say learning the craft meaning like writing, the right craft of writing, or um, the craft of really publishing their book and uh, promoting their book? I think, yes, all of that, <laughs> learning how to write, because uh, writers, and I was like this too, I loved to write, but a lot of the time I was just writing through my own voice because I loved it. Um, you have to learn how to write for your readers, and then uh, book marketing and cover design, you have to be able to put that out there and do that as an expert, otherwise you won't get the success that you're looking for. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Well, tell us about a project, a project or an accomplishment that you consider to be one of the most significant in your career. I have had so many amazing experiences and projects at Eschler Editing. I honestly didn't think it would be this rewarding um, editing other people's work because at my heart I'm a writer, but um, it's amazing to see the talent that comes through um, and they're all so unique. As a team, we've loved seeing our authors get agents, hit bestseller lists or snag competitive uh, publishing contracts. Um, but about a year ago, I had a special project that I loved. I worked on a nonfiction children's book for Shadow Mountain Publishing. Um, and my job was to transcribe several hours of interviews and compile the most compelling bits into the manuscript. And the editors at Shadow Mountain said they relied heavily on my work with both the transcript and my suggestions for which stories to include in the middle grade um, edition of the book and the book which is called She Stood for Freedom, it's about Joan Mulholland, she was a civil rights activist in the 1960s. Um, it was recently nominated for the 2017 Amelia Bloomer Award which wow. recognizes well written and well illustrated books with significant feminist content attended for young readers and that was amazing. I listened to hours of her talking about her experiences and then put it all, you know, the most compelling bits into this manuscript and it just, it's a beautiful book and she has a beautiful story. I'm so proud to have worked on it. Wow, that's great. And then uh, most recently I completed a content edit on a young adult manuscript and the author, she, she was a self-published author. She had some traditional publishing through, I believe it was Covenant Communications, um, but then she wrote this young adult book and self-published it and I've checked it out on Amazon and she's getting really good reviews and I'm really happy to have helped her bring her story to, to the world. Would you say of the authors that you have are um, more of them self-publishing versus traditional publishing? What are you seeing the trend as being? Uh, mostly for me because I'm more on the fiction side than nonfiction. I see authors who want to get their books ready to send to agents, to send their query letters out and have them ready or to present to agents at different writers conferences. Um, but I have seen, you know, like the one that I just did where she just wanted it to be ready to go and, and self-publish out on, out on Amazon and have it be marketable and quality book. So I think the majority are, for, for me, for fiction, are people who want to go and find agents and have their manuscript ready and not, you know, not just thrown to the agent and say, hey, I wrote this book, but it's really been polished. Mm -hmm. 
So it seems like uh, then most are still going the traditional publishing route for the fiction. Um, do you have any knowledge uh, through your company about the nonfiction? Are they doing the same, or are you seeing more self-publishing of the nonfiction? Nonfiction, I think, um, this is a great question for Angela because she does a yeah. lot of nonfiction. But I think that, again, they have more, they would, they tend to have more success in the self-publishing. Um, mm -hmm. You guys, you ladies are publishers. Do you see the same thing? Yeah, we're seeing, um, uh, we're starting to see a trend in the fiction part where they're reaching out to us to do more of a self-publish um, without the traditional publishing. Because what we do is we bridge the gap between self-publishing and traditional publishers. So we help them market their book, which a lot of times traditional publishers don't do for their authors. So um, that's why I think our, our situation is unique with Elite Online Publishing, that we offer that service that we don't just self-publish, but we give you a whole platform and a marketing campaign to go with it. So I have seen, just le uh, recently, we've had a trend of fiction writers that have reached out to us. Yeah. Well, I have a personal question for you, Lindsay. Okay. Well, and you can answer it in general, too, but I was wondering, with editors, do you care that you don't really get recognized? Like, you know, on Amazon, we've got the author, and, you know, do some of the authors want to put you as editor and they have that on the front cover of the book or you know put your name on on there or do they or do you never get that like and do you care like are you like oh, I wish my name was somewhere you know what I mean I just wondered about that uh, as an editor we're kinda of supposed to be invisible right. <laughs> you know, we're we're the coach in the background and then the the athlete gets all the glory um, right but a lot of time Sorry, I was just going to say, but a lot of times you are the, you really are the ghostwriter. Like, you wrote the whole thing. I mean, it was their idea, but I mean, you know what I'm saying? Right. Exactly. Um, this is a good question. <laughs> <laughs> well, how do you feel? I mean, how do you feel about it personally? Because I'm I sure don't, I think it's different. Yeah. I, I guess, you know what, well, I don't mind because I'm a writer myself, and when I, you know, when I publish my stuff, when I when I I've published some prose and some poetry, that's my idea. That's, those are my words. Yeah. Some help me publish them. Um, but and I think, you know, I'm I'm also a, a concert junkie, so I read a lot about music and how they get music out to the world. And a lot of the time, you know, producers kind of coach and shift the musicians, but it's still their words and their music. So I don't mind being in the in the background um, and not mentioned in the book. Um, I, a couple of my fellow um, colleague editors, they um, they have a couple books that they edited and in the back their names are listed in the acknowledgments and they, you know, that's super cool is, you know, thank you to this this person who helped me get this mm -hmm. book out. So <clears throat> I haven't seen that yet on any that I've worked on. Mm -hmm. <laughs> um, but I. I think for me it's satisfying that I've helped somebody bring their book to the world. Yeah. Well, I was just curious because uh, one of our authors had asked, should we mention the editor? Should we put her on? You know, there is a place you can um, include the editor and then you can also put it on the front cover of the book or you can just put it on the acknowledgments like you said, but or, or even in the copyright information. Yeah. That's very cool. Oh, sorry, go ahead. <laughs> That's some great insight into the background of editing. What do you do? Do you take someone's product if they, um, do you do ghostwriting where it's just an idea and some random thoughts? Like sometimes we have clients that come to us and they just have a bunch of journals or stories that are together. Can you take that and put it into a book for them? Yes. Yes, we do. We do have a, a ghostwriting service. Um, and yeah, you know, when you said that, I just kept thinking, yeah, I could be Bram Stoker. I can take all, you know, those journals and put them together. <laughs> um, <laughs> but yes, absolutely, because that's what we do. We we help bring stories together and bring them out. Um, and we do have, I I just mentioned this, but we do have a ghostwriting service where we can take blogs and journals and letters and just compile them and format them into a book. And that's one of the things that we definitely tell our, especially our nonfiction writers, that you want an editor, a professional editor, to do that for you. Otherwise, it's just 
a jumble of thoughts. You know, good thoughts, but you want someone who knows the business and knows how to put together a marketable book. Yeah, that's a great idea. And, uh, you know, we're very big on repurposing your, your content. So I love that you said about blogs, have people use blogs that they already have or newsletters they already have to create a book with it. You get a whole new audience when you do that. So Yes. And sometimes they think, oh, I don't know how to do it. But you just hand it over to the ghostwriter and they'll do it. Well, thanks, Lindsay. It has been a pleasure talking with you. You gave us some great insider information on how an editor works and what an editor needs and what you're looking for. We really appreciate you coming by. Would you like to let us, um, please let us know where everyone can reach you and the website. Okay. Yeah. Thank you so much for having me. Um, so we have some incredible resources on the site where people can get an introduction on how the publishing industry works, you know, how to decide between self-publishing and traditional. Um, our website is eschlerediting.com, and um, you can contact us on there and go through our blog and our articles, and we have, um, there's this bright red button on our featured image at the top, and they can sign up to get some of our resources. Great, thank you. Well, before you go, do you want to tell us you know, three things that uh, we can learn that we can take away from the expertise that you know? Sure, I can try. <laughs> uh -huh. um, a published book, you know, can open doors you can't imagine for your business or cause. It can dramatically increase your platform and credibility for fiction authors. Um, and it can maybe even make you famous, you know. <laughs> of course, you don't go into it thinking you're going to be the next J.K. Rowling. But, um, you can write a book that can make an impact on the world. Um, so you need to go pro. You need to learn the industry and your choices and hire people to help you and reach that success. Um, and I know writers, like I mentioned earlier, they have a lot of self-doubt, they're introverts, but focus on how to get out of that. Go to writers' conferences, network, and trust that those writers and editors have been there too. I love that. You know, and a lot of um, the people that Melanie and I work with they, they wouldn't even call themselves writers because some of them um, are just being interviewed. And so they're writing their book, but they're really just talking their book. And so I think that last sentence you said is, is key where you just have to have confidence in yourself and then, and then lean on that pro and that editor or that ghostwriter for them to make your story come out so that you can share it with the world. Absolutely. That's great. We're going to leave on that note. Remember to subscribe to us. Please leave us a review. We'd really appreciate it. This is an awesome interview. Hope you learned a lot. Um, and share it with your friends. And we'll see you next time. For more information about us, go to EliteOnlinePublishing.com. To get your free book, The Accomplishment and Success Story Starter, simply text your name and email to 832-572-5285. That's 832-572-5285. Five two eight five. We'd also like to thank Audible for supporting Elite Expert Insider. To get your free 30-day trial, please go to bit.ly forward slash Elite Audible. That's bit.ly forward slash Elite Audible. And get your free 30-day trial to show your support. Thank you, Audible.